I'm Dr. Jeffrey Hort, the Director of Pediatric Hematology, Oncology, and the Showers Family Center for Childhood Cancer and Blood Disorders at Akron Children's Hospital. Severe aplastic anemia is a condition in which a patient's bone marrow fails to produce the normal blood cells. That means red blood cells, which help carry oxygen throughout your body, white blood cells, which help you fight infection, and platelets, which help your blood to clot. So uh, it can be caused by a variety of things. Many times we don't know what causes it, but basically the marrow shuts down and fails to produce blood cells. The treatment for severe aplastic anemia is dependent upon uh, if we identify a cause. So when we have a patient who uh, first presents to us with very low blood counts and we're going through the process of figuring out what's going on, the first step that we have to do, particularly in looking at a young child, is to uh, rule out any type of inherited condition. Uh, there are a number of inherited bone marrow failure problems um, of which you would treat somewhat differently uh, if those were identified. Um, those are rare, they're all quite rare. Things such as uh, Fanconi's anemia is one of those uh, things. We also look for myelodysplastic syndrome. We look for even stranger things called dyskeratosis congenita, uh, a, a number of those kinds of uh, rare disorders that can lead the bone marrow to fail. But then we, once we've eliminated those congenital disorders and we're left with either a post-infectious problem following some type of viral illness like hepatitis or even ones that we can't identify or we don't know what the cause is, then we really sort of have a, a couple of major options. One is to, um, since the marrow has basically been emptied out by the problem, we could treat the patient with a bone marrow transplant. So we're going to fill that empty marrow with marrow from a suitable donor. We like that donor to be a uh, have the same bone marrow type and to be a family member because that makes the procedure uh, less complicated uh, and less risky. So that's our first option. Most people will not have a family member who has the same bone marrow type. So when we're left in that situation, which is about 80% of the time, then we're looking at, at doing something to control uh, the immune system, which is really what is suppressing the bone marrow. So what really happens in, in most of these non-congenital cases is that some infection, chemical, something has triggered the patient's immune system to sort of become overactive. And the immune system itself is fighting against the patient's own bone marrow and shutting it down. So if we can control this overactive uh, immune system, then we can let the marrow that's normal sort of repopulate uh, the marrow spaces. So that involves a couple of different medications to help suppress the immune system. So those are, uh, we have a couple of options in doing that, and those are the two basic categories of treatment. Here at Akron Children's Hospital, we probably see about one case of aplastic anemia every one to two years. So it's quite rare. The pediatric population, when I say pediatric, I'm really meaning anyone under 21, it's probably somewhere around two cases per million uh, population in the U.S. per year. There are some areas of the world where aplastic anemia is a little more common than it is in the U.S., uh, particularly in Southeast Asia and some of those areas because they have a much higher incidence of hepatitis and we do know that uh, there will be a, a percentage of patients who, when recovering from hepatitis, will develop aplastic anemia. So depending upon which treatment is, is used in a patient with aplastic anemia, uh, the complications and the success rates are different. So for a patient who does have a family member with the same bone marrow type and we undertake, or the patient undertakes a bone marrow transplant, the success rate is quite good. It's somewhere probably these days in the 85 to 90 percent success rate. And uh, rarely does, is there a problem after that. Sometimes with the transplant itself, the marrow may not engraft and you may still have marrow failure. That, uh, with the current treatments that's used with transplant today, that is a pretty rare complication. However, uh, what a transplant does is that there is a fair amount of chemotherapy given before uh, the process to also sort of shut down the immune system. 
And because of this intensive treatment going into the transplant, there are complications associated with that. Things like, uh, for example, in young women, ovarian failure and infertility is a problem. Um, also, there is a risk uh, somewhat of having a secondary cancer somewhere down the road, although that risk is small. The biggest risk associated uh, with going through a bone marrow transplant like that is a condition called graft versus host disease. And that's really where the donor's marrow attacks the recipient's um, body such that uh, there are a number of complications that can affect really any organ, the liver, the lungs, the skin, um, any organ. And if that sort of goes out of control or is difficult to control, then that itself can be a life-threatening problem. So those are the, the complications associated with transplant. And all those patients treated with immunosuppression, the drugs that help sort of uh, calm down this overactive immune system, um, there are, um, the success rate is about 80% uh, or so of patients will respond. It's not entirely clear uh, what the recurrence risk is. There are a lot of factors that's associated with that. How long did they get the immunosuppression to begin with? How vigorous was their response to start with? All those things can sort of help predict the recurrence rate. But probably out of that group of 80% of the patients treated with immunosuppression that do respond, there probably will be somewhere in the range of perhaps 25-30% that uh, at some point will have a, and at that point is usually pretty quickly after the treatment, that will have a drop in their blood counts again and might require retreatment. So it's important to raise awareness uh, about severe aplastic anemia because it is a very rare disorder. There's only a few hundred cases in the United States per year. Um, and so most people don't know about this, this disease. And again, sometimes it gets lost in uh, larger groups of disorders like myelodysplasia and other kinds of marrow failure problems that affect different groups um, and are treated differently. So by people being aware of what the disease is and who it affects and how it works, uh, there'll be a greater understanding of what the needs are to help uh, eradicate this disease. So um, by hopefully by people being aware that it exists, they'll see that there are needs and we'd be more willing to support uh, an effort to uh, turn things around uh, with this disorder. So I think that money that, that would be raised to support uh, this initiative would go to uh, one, education of the community, um, one, educating parents because there's not, and, and patients, there's not a lot of material or resources when a patient is diagnosed to be able to tell them about what it is they're dealing with and what, how we're going to approach it and what the complications are. And then uh, we would certainly want to look at uh, research both in understanding why do some people get this and other people don't. Uh, again, many people get hepatitis, but a very small percentage ever come down with a plastic anemia. What's different about those populations? And so really understand what it is that leads patients to come down with this disorder. And then, uh, that should help us to be able to target therapy better and come up with uh, better treatments than what right now is really sort of a shotgun approach. We have sort of these two or three major ways of treating aplastic anemia and none of which are real specific to, to a cause. We can either try to refill the empty marrow with donated marrow. We can try to just sort of shut down the immune system entirely until the marrow can come back, but there are problems associated with that. So it would be nice to be able to develop very targeted therapy toward the cause of a patient's specific uh, uh, marrow failure problem and then go from there. So there are lots of uses or lots of ways in which money could be used to improve uh, the, our understanding and the treatment of severe aplastic anemia.